it's the intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Hey everybody, this could be a multi-part series, so feel free to kind of keep up with multiple videos here. I know that might sound like a lot, but I want to kind of hit the game from a couple different angles. We've been doing this a lot lately with going over some of our older gameplay where we looked at like the level 32 ships and we talked about is there any value in things like Centurion and Sout and all these things. Today, I want to make a part of a video where I want to talk about spending in the game. So we're going to have a few complete free to plays come on in a round table type discussion. And we've actually been talking about this a lot in my discord. If you haven't joined already, feel free to, but like players like this, you know, level 54 and free to play and, and finding ways to excel in the game and finding ways to progress. And we've even got people who are like borderline free to play the highest we have. Um, now I'll have to go to Scopely and verify this because you, you know, but no, but I mean, it's level 58. who's only got $40 supposedly in and does show the, you know, no extra builder, no extra researcher, basic treasury, but still, I mean, you want to verify. We don't want anybody chasing clout for no reason. But I do want to do a video with free to play, pure free to play, because even though I have pure free to play accounts, it's not the main account that I play every day. And the main account that I play is this one, which gets about 140 ish dollars worth of stuff every month. But I do have free to play accounts like the one on server 97, as an example, the one on server 32, the one on server 63 that I don't log into, and then the one I have on the EU side of things. But all that aside, you know, that's going to be another video. Today, we're going to talk about light spending. And I want to do this one by myself because I can, well, I can speak very clearly with personal experience because I don't have an account that's ever had $1,000 thrown into it at a time. It's never even had $1,000 thrown into it in a year. However, getting things every month and maybe getting things that have long-term viability, I think appeals to a lot of the people who watch this channel and to a lot of people who consider, should you spend in the game? Now, be clear i'm not trying to twist your arm just trying to make sure the people who want to spend do it effectively if you're one of those people who is completely 100 free to play we can watch this and maybe decide whether something's valuable if it ever gets a free to play path but if nothing else you're getting your own video so don't worry if you're one of those people who's adamant i'm never going to spend in this game by the way completely okay we've got a video coming for that so let's talk about what has value to you if you are a light spender in the game when i say light spender i'm talking anywhere from 20 to 200 dollars a month um us now that can vary that might sound like a lot of money to some people and to other people it sounds like nothing because we do have people in this game who will spend four thousand dollars in a day i know those are very different people and to be clear this video is not for them either because if you're spending four grand in a day the logic that i'm about to hit you with doesn't really apply because you're probably already purchasing everything i'm going to mention so you won't need to know well do i balance it this month and do it this or do i do it that right so without further ado let's go over some of the basics I think one of the most valuable things that you can purchase long-term in the game is just bar none long-term great purchase is the extra dock you start getting in the low 30s. So you can actually get two extra docks in the game right now. And with those extra docks, you can host multiple ships. Now you do not get an extra gun for those extra docks. So if you buy a dock, you're going to find stuff like this where you don't get an extra gun for base defense, which does make sense in terms of like that would make spenders bases even more difficult to get through when they already have a ship being there as a gauntlet. So number one, if we're talking about something that you want to spend money on that has a forever value, if you played five plus years in the game like I do, an extra dock is like number one on the list. And there's two different ones you can get. Now you do get six docks completely free to play if you go up to level 49. You'll get six of them no matter what. If you want to get the extra two, the current only ways to do that is by purchasing. And we have made an argument that free to play players, those pure free to play that we talk about that are out there enjoying this game and being amazing. They honestly need access to at least one more free-to-play dock. So definitely an argument to be made of finding a way to get players that seventh dock for free, even if it's a long-term grind of some sort. Other things that I personally think have value but will vary is the first extra builder slot, which is this one right up here. That's $2. I'm sorry, $5. That second builder slot, it's 5 US. And then the second researcher I personally like. Do you need all of them? No. But it does make things handy, especially in the 40s, when you have stuff that has ridiculously long timers. Let me give you an example. If I wanted to go to level 51 right now, I could, with this building that takes almost 600 days. That's with no exocomps turned on or anything. So that would tie up my singular building slot for over a year, unless I sped it up. Or I can have it upgrading and still have an extra slot for $5. That way I can upgrade my war room if I so choose, right? So again, where do you find the value for you as a player 
I personally think that $5 for a forever purchase is completely fine because there are other mobile games I've played that you spend that $5 and all you did was get it for a week, right? And then the extra builder is gone. Here you spend five bucks, you get it completely forever. Same logic with the researcher. It's because the times get so long, it's nice to be able to say, hey, I'm gonna let that one cook a while because it takes 60 days. Let me go ahead and do this other one that's 10 days. I can just speed it up and use that for an event. All right, so those are kind of forever purchases. There are a couple other forever purchases that are worth mentioning. These are forbidden technologies. This really will only apply to players 40 plus, but still worth hearing out. Things like the Ferengi Whip, the rares that came out um, have a special refinery. The Ferengi Whip is going to greatly increase the amount of rare and epic uh, FT fragments that you source, which is super valuable. And it also can also improve the amount of protomatter that you're sourcing. That one is $50. You come down to one of these, for example, uh, where is it at? Oh my gosh, I've gone blind. Right here, the dual photon warheads. This one has a refinery that greatly increases the amount of tear up catalyst. You get every day which is another bottleneck in this game and again fifty dollars now this is a permanent refinery so you have it forever so if you can't tell the theme of what i'm looking at for low spenders it's things that give me long-term benefits that i will always be using you will be using fts deep into the game because of the value they provide even if all that you're doing is upgrading the metreon cascade for your hostile grinding because remember the metreon cascade maxed out gives you a two thousand percent whole health bonus and believe it or not even in today's game that still holds value. So, so far I've given you what? Five things, six things that have long-term value forever that are worth going after. And we haven't even talked about a prime yet. Next thing I would say in terms of every month is valuable is the $20 battle pass right here. Personally think that this is still the best value in the game for your money. And this is an every month thing. So that would imply that you're spending, you know, over $200 a year on Star Trek Fleet Command, which again is completely up to you. Maybe you buy it here, there, whatever. But in terms of what's in it, it consistently has some of the best value in the game, and it generally gets updated two times a year to improve the rewards. So we do see this gradually increase in terms of what it's paying out. It does not stagnate. It's one of the very few things they actually will update because there's some packs in this game that have not been updated in four years, but are still available to purchase. But this constantly gets updated and constantly has value to progress you in your gameplay if you're willing to spend a little bit every month. Please remember, this video is directed at light spenders. It's not... Trying to encourage people who don't spend to spend. This is just simply make sure you get value for your money. So there's going to be that one person out there. I just, I just know. There's going to be that one who's like, ah, Rev. Trying to get us to spend money. No. Now, season passes are real tricky for me. Because personally, I have a limit on how much I can afford to spend in any video game. No matter when it is or what game it is. I have a limit. So when you start combining the territory wave defense passes, you can find yourself really creeping into that $200 a month. And pretty consistently i would say the advantage to the territory capture one is it does take three months so you're not spending that money every month which is fine and i would say that the rewards you get are very valuable for going through that territory research but you might not need to do this all the time like you might only need to buy one of these and then you wait maybe do it season four and season six or you know maybe never do it but there are some things that have value here like your isolated artifact tokens all those research particles and then I'm never going to turn away Section 31 credits. There are some good things down there that will progress your game. And I guess it just depends on how much you want to do it. Because if you're not doing these, then they don't have any value at all, right? I mean, it's obvious. If you are doing them, they do have a little bit of value, but not as much as the original Battle Pass, in my opinion. And now I'm finally actually going to hit that sell button. Yeah. Eight minutes of rambling on about things that I think are valuable because they are permanent. Well, here we start getting into things that are valuable period every now and then a hundred dollar elite is worth it but i am of the camp because i'm a light spender i never buy this ever this one if you're going to spend a hundred dollars the elite monthly pack this one tends to be good for all players now this will um vary based on your ops level based on where you're at in the game but this is just simply more resources every month remember you get the left side when you purchase and you get the right side if you redeem it every single day and that says up to of what you can earn. So that's, uh, you know, another 1.3 million Latinum to go along with this. 3.1 million Latinum is more than you're going to get from most individual packs. It should be pointed out that also the treasury is another $100 purchase that is worth it. It's going to have materials, officers, etc. that really benefit your game. Then you get to the tricky side of things, which are officers and primes. And while I do believe that officers are forever, I would be very, very picky about what I purchase here. Like, I don't purchase building upgrades. I don't. You know how much it costs to upgrade your war room to max? $3,000. So if you want to do that, more power to you. I don't. 
I'm not spending that type of money on that building. I don't buy building upgrades. I let them slow grind themselves. Officers are maybe. I mean, for example, Nurse Chapel is a game-changingly positive officer that currently only has sourcing through purchasing. So sure, but I'm not gonna go out of my way. And then I generally tend to ignore all of this that comes out every month just based on my personal style of gameplay. I ignore all this, doesn't provide much value. The only primes that I currently am interested in, and I'll show them to you, actually have free to play pathing. So there are a couple that I do think are good. There are a lot of primes that can boost your game, but prime efficient ship parts, Prime Efficient Ship Engineering, and the G3 through G5 Prime Research Efficiency, these are three examples of what I believe are good value in the game. But the good news is, you can still free-to-play source these if you want with the Dolomite Particles with there being three drips in the game. Because the game continually is adding new things every month, every month, a lot of the primes that used to have value have lost their value, right? You, you even saw these brought in this month that, I mean, cool, I guess but you have plenty of isolating being added to the game in a free-to-play way. Not to mention you have these down here that have free-to-play sourcing with your isolating damage boost for all ships. Again, these have free-to-play sourcing now with three different drips for dolomite particles. Now, I'm not trying to say that there aren't primes that have value. And generally, when we get into the prime discussion, it's one of those that we just say, hey, reach out to us directly. We'll go over your budget and see if that's good for you right now. But what ends up happening is things get outdated rather quickly you can actually reach out to some of the high levels and ask them about that if you want but you'll find some things like prime g4 uh, g4 parts this is already invalidated like this is not worth a hundred dollars because of things that already exist like the prime efficient ship parts that i just showed you it just doesn't have much value in the game and it's limited to g4 whereas at least the g5 one is maybe more of your future there's just things that happen in the game where primes will invalidate primes sometimes that haven't even been out for six months so be very careful walking the prime line one of those that if you see something special that you know is going to last a while for your gameplay like those prime efficient ship parts ones they're worth going after but generally speaking for a light spinner i stick to the things that are guaranteed battle passes treasuries things like that and working on progressing that way that's my recommendations if you haven't done any of those things well that's what you can go after but if there is something specific that you want to know does it matter like for example we used to talk about prime officers and prime officer survival being worth it are they worth 200 dollars now absolutely not why? Things like the mess hall exist now. Getting a 100% officer stat bonus from a random prime is worthless in today's game, but there was a time where that was an absolute must have and must buy. No longer is the case. So with there being so many primes, like 200, we'll go out them on an individual basis. When it comes to what has value in the game, hopefully this video gave you a little bit of an idea and can't wait to do the free to play video with y'all to talk about strategies in the game for free to play as well as spending strategies for light spinners and how those gameplays differ. Anyway, live long and plunder. Stay safe for the Space Cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next one. And uh, I'm out. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.